Hello everyone and welcome back to the podcast. Today I'm going to be talking about why I believe that the recent DeepSeek advancements are particularly bullish for Palantir and AMD, but also for the broader ecosystem of extraordinary American tech companies. Generally, we are on a broad trajectory towards exponentially more parameters per dollar spent in training. This is what truly matters for Palantir, AMD, and even Nvidia shareholders. Also, the battle for chip supremacy between the US and the former USSR teaches us that regimes cannot innovate as sustainably as free economies can. So let's get deep into it. DeepSeek R1 has 671 billion parameters and allegedly cost $5.58 million to train, while ChatGPT has around 170 billion parameters and cost orders of magnitude more than that. If you choose to trust the information coming out of China, which historically hasn't been a good policy, this actually means that Palantir is set to grow way quicker. And I think it's going to grow way quicker than people imagine, regardless of whether the DeepSeek thing is true or not. More parameters for less dollars means that we're about to see the end applications of AI explode and with it the utility of Palantir's platform for end customers. This also means Palantir's platform gets easier to deploy and use, driving more business. If the whole deep seek thing is true, it's merely a continuation of the curve that you see on the screen now. Over time, humanity has constantly found ways to deliver more compute per dollar in constant terms. In terms of LLMs, this means we are going to see models with more parameters being trained for less money. This is ultimately how trillion dollar parameter models become a commodity and AI goes mainstream. This is the path along which Palantir's digital twins also become the epicenter of Western capitalism and AMD, Nvidia and other companies in the chip space come to sell way more chips than we can imagine at present. It's true that such a leap in parameters trained per dollar makes the Nasdaq's AI capex look a little bit silly, but what will actually happen is the deployed infrastructure will get far more efficient practically overnight. Even even if DeepSeek's training cost is much higher than the alleged $5.58 million, the trend in the graph that I was showing on the screen just now still applies. Any given installed compute capacity becomes 10x more efficient almost instantly the moment you slash the training cost per parameter by 10x, because now you can simply go and use that infrastructure to achieve so much more. We are going to see bigger, higher performing and cheaper models emerge with a relatively regular cadence, and that's likely to make us all far richer. LLMs are clearly on a path towards being commoditized as they become increasingly indistinguishable one from the other, driving downward pricing pressure. The value for companies, however, is in being able to use LLMs to drive more revenue and lower costs. And for that, Palantir software is still essential. Together with the semiconductor companies, Palantir stands to benefit the most from the progress and commoditization of LLMs as it makes their digital twins exponentially more powerful for companies with zero incremental R&D dollars. Nvidia and AMD were down big time in the pre-market today when I was writing this up, but this is a short-sighted move on behalf of the market. As previously mentioned, more parameters per dollar makes the existing infrastructure more efficient. In the short term, it's true that this makes additional GPU purchases redundant, but the demand for compute naturally doesn't stop there. Cheaper models mean more AI workloads across the board, which will still drive exponentially higher levels of training and inference workloads. For AMD specifically, DeepSeek's progress, at least in terms of performance, is great news. DeepSeek V3 was launched before the R1 model on the 26th of December of 2024. AMD announced the integration of the V3 model in the MI300X chip just yesterday, and the relatively rapid integration reveals two very important facts that I think AMD shareholders should be paying attention to. One, the size of the MI300X's larger memory seems to be ideally suited to support the rapidly increasing size of LLMs. Over the past few months, they managed to get all of Llama's inference workloads on the MI300X, and that model has 405 billion parameters. V3 has 617 billion and the R1 actually has the same number of parameters. So the delta from Llama to V3 is actually quite big, but it shows that the MI300X can scale very well. Two, and perhaps even more importantly, because this is the aspect that was more unknown in the thesis, is that AMD software is getting better quickly. As LLMs get larger, it becomes increasingly crucial to be able to store them on chip in order to minimize latency. In theory, AMD's chip-led platform enables them to add higher memory capacity to their chips than their competitors, which ultimately enables them to perform cheaper and faster inferences. This is well evidenced by Meta's decision to run inferences exclusively on the MI300X, but until yesterday, we weren't seeing signs of traction in the market beyond that. Much of this relatively slow progress has to do with AMD software not being good enough to scale
scale beyond deployments where they provide tailored support, as they have done with Meta. The fact that AMD could integrate DeepSeek v3 briskly likely indicates that whatever software they use to get Llama's inferences running on the MI300X at scale is likely being productized fast as we speak. This suggests AMD is making good progress with its software and that we will likely see the software scaling beyond manual support in the near future. Since AMD has competitive AI hardware now, especially on the inference side, the progress on the software side is likely to be quite accretive for the company's earning power. As better models drive more applications and thus much higher inference workloads, this seems likely to be the perfect storm for AMD's success. Lastly, DeepSeek poses questions about America's ability to beat China in the AI race. And while history doesn't repeat itself, it does rhyme. This is why I believe there is much to be learned by studying the battle for semiconductor supremacy between the US and the former USSR during the Cold War. In essence, what happened is that people in Russia couldn't actually innovate sustainably because at some point their work would be inconvenient to the Communist Party. At times, it seemed that the USSR would take off regarding chip innovation, but then eventually their work would be cut off by the government one way or the other. Innovation is structurally inconvenient for regimes because it involves the free flow of information. At some point, regimes are forced to intervene information flow in order to preserve their interests. This is why it's hard for a regime to compete with a free economy like the US and why betting on the latter is statistically a sounder bet. For a deep dive on this topic, I recommend reading Chip War by Chris Miller. It's a fascinating read and it will equip you with a philosophical framework to better understand the AI race that's unfolding as we speak. That's it for today. Thank you very much for joining me. If you enjoyed this, could you please share this with one friend? That's a little favor that I'd like to ask you. These deep dives are for free and so the only way this grows is with your help. Thank you very much. Take care and until next time.